and you have until the end of the month, which is next Sunday, to update any information um, for our directory. And also, we will have a we will take a group photo of our church family uh, following the church following the service next Sunday, November 29th. And everybody, please be in attendance. And we want we want you to be in the picture with us too, obviously, because you're part of the family. So everybody, please make plans to be here next Sunday, November 29th, for our group photo that we're going to take out there. And attention, all who are participating in the Christmas program, or who all or who wants to participate in the Christmas program, there will be another final practice held on Wednesday, December 2nd, at 5:30. Please make plans to come so we can run over the. Program one last time. This is not a Christmas program practice. It's just Christmas practice. Oh, okay. Just Christmas practice. <laughs> so everybody, please uh, remember that uh, December second, Wednesday at five thirty. Um, and some uh, events coming up there. Our list is dwindling down. So um, our fellowship hall table decorations. You know, we've done we've done that for several years now. There are, um, I believe, six tables back there that need to be decorated, six or seven, I'm not sure. But um, if you'd like to volunteer and uh, show off your Christmas decorating skills and um, get a table back there, you can do that anytime the week of December 6th through the 12th. So um, everybody, please remember that. And our Christmas, um, our Christmas time here and our meal, Christmas meal, will be Sunday, December 13th at 5, at 5 p.m., and a Christmas Eve communion service on Thursday, December 24th at 5 p.m. And pastor pastoral open house at Diane's house, Tuesday, December 29th, 5 p.m. until. Everybody keep that in mind, too. Mark your calendars. It's hard to believe we're getting down to the end of the year. <laughs> but it is here. And everybody, please remember to be in prayer for our igniting ministries in 2010 uh, for our church next year. And also another announcement, um, the papers were put out there a little late today because I gave them to me, um, but it's regarding angel food, and do you have anything you want to say about um, that? We had, uh, a couple of people had asked me about it. Um, Alabama City is the uh, host site for angel food, and it is a program where for $30 there's food for um, a family for for a week. But you don't have to be a family of four, and you don't have to eat it all in one week. Um, but there are other um, special boxes, and if you'd like to look at, I've brought some um, menus. Um, there are several different things that they sell, and um, our deadline for if you'd like to order something is December 7th, and it's pickup day is on that form. I think it's, I, I cannot think of the day. Um, but um, it's a program um, that you don't have to qualify for. You don't have to be, you know, made under a certain dollar amount or over a certain dollar amount. Anyone can buy from Angel Food, and it, it is really a good way of stretching your, um, you know, grocery dollars. Um, Don and I every month will order maybe not the signature box, but one of the boxes from it, and it's good quality food. Um, you know that if you there are steaks in there that you know are really good. Uh, so you know just if you're interested at all, pick up a menu and look it over. Um, and if you have any questions, just give me a call. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, we they this is a thing that happens every month. Um, and um, yesterday was our distribution day, and it's hectic there that day. But you know we're always blessed by all the people that come and get their food and know that they're going to be. You know, a little less hungry this next couple of weeks. There you go. All right. Any other announcements today? Well, we do have a birthday this coming week. John, you're turning 29, aren't you? <laughs> 22. Okay, 22. All right. Let's sing happy birthday to our friend John. I would like to say a special welcome to my mother, 
know who you're being praying for. And also, he just snuck in there in the back, my friend Chris, that's been helping me out with all this technology stuff that we've been doing. <laughs> he drove up here from uh, Jacksonville, or Pleasant Valley, so he, he gunned it this morning. So thank you guys for coming and worshiping with us today. Let's open our service with prayer. Father, as we enter into this time of worship and uh, thanksgiving, um, help us to remember that what we're here for, we're here to worship you and to lift your name up and to give you thanks for all your blessings bestowed upon our lives. Father, I, I, I give special thanks to you um, for everybody that's here this morning that has made the way out and uh, in the dreary, wet weather. Um, and I pray for those that are not here for whatever reason. And I pray for everybody this week that they may have a safe and happy Thanksgiving with their families. And uh, for those that maybe not that don't have families, uh, I just I just pray for them also, and that you would uh, that you would give them the comfort they need to get through this week. And uh, just uh, be with us during this time of worship. Uh, come in, come into this service. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. And uh, as we lift your name and uh, give you thanks, praise, and glory for your blessing on us. These things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's worship together today with him. 694. Be with the ones that are here. And we also ask you 
to be with the ones that are, are uh, giving this morning and, and uh, we ask you to take this offering and, and uh, put it to, to the use of, of, of your word these things we ask in your name so I mean, Right. 
this time as we prepare to be in prayer, do we have any joys or concerns that we wish to share with one another? Yes, I do. I have lots of good things that have been happening lately. Um, I won't go through them all, but got my new grandbaby, and she's in good health, and my daughter too. And just several things that God has just worked out for me when I didn't know what I was going to do, and I just decided not to do anything to trust Him and be dependent on Him. And he came through and was just glorified in my eyes. Things be done. Remember my granddaughter's baby? She has the swine flu. this particular time of year. Help us to remember to set aside that time before we get busy with all of the things that become the Christmas holidays. Yes, Lord, that is a glorious time of year. But help us to stop. Stop and think about you and what you have done and given us throughout our lives and in particular this past year. Lord, you have given us good health. You have helped heal those that are sick. You have been with us during times when we needed comforted, when we have mourned. Lord, you have given us wisdom. You have given us strength. You have given us all the things that we need, plus so much more. So, Lord, we come to you this time of year to sing your praises, to sing them loud and with clear voices, and to give you thanks. In your Son's precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to sing this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings.
Becoming more, thinking they were more than who they were. But this enthronement was, was an important part of the life of Israel. Matter of fact, the psalm that we read, Psalm 93, that we read together in um, a litany, was one of the psalms that they would sing during this celebration of the re enthroning of the king when Yahweh becomes king once again. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It it shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. This reestablishment of the order of creation reminding everyone that it was God that created the world and that it was God that created them. This is also in our tradition the last Sunday of our liturgical year. In other words, the last Sunday of the Christian calendar. Which could be confusing with the actual calendar that everyone else uses, but we finish our year today. And we begin next week when we begin Advent with the new calendar year for the church. This is a time to celebrate the end of the year. 
It is a celebration of the Lord of glory. It is a celebration of the coming reign of Christ and the completion of creation. The book of Revelation praises God as the king forever and Christ is the ruler of the kings of the earth. I'm sure many of you have heard Handel's Messiah where they sing, King of kings and Lord of lords, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. John opens his letter by saying, Dear churches, now, he is speaking to the seven churches that are in Asia, but he is also speaking to the churches of today. The word in Greek for church is ecclesia, which breaks down to eat, which is out, and ecclesia, which means called ones. So he is writing this letter to the ones that are called out for God, for their Lord, for their Savior. So we being the church are also ones called out for a special purpose. We are different and separate from the world. It's hard to remain different and separate from the world, but we are called out to do that. And then he says, grace to you and peace. Now that was a common a greeting at the time for Christians, they would cut, greet one another, and instead of saying, Hey, how you doing? they'd say, Grace and peace to you. Grace and peace to you. The grace was, was important. It was um, a grace reminding us of the favor and an acceptance that we have from God. And how that extends to all believers. How that we are forgiven people. How that we can always come to God and receive that grace. And peace. Who doesn't need some peace in their lives from time to time? Because believers can enjoy a peace. A peace that is with God. And a peace that is of God. So as they greeted one another, they would say, Grace, you are forgiven. You have received favor with God and peace to you that you may feel the peace even in all of the, the, the chaos in your life. You may feel the peace with God and of God. That inner tranquility that we have during all the experiences we have in our life. And then we have listed three phrases that identify the source of that grace and peace. Because John wasn't giving them the grace and the peace that he was speaking of. This grace and this peace came from him who was, who is, and who is to come from the one who set the spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ. He gives them a threefold divine name of this person that they are receiving Christ, this grace and peace from. And it's not about the Trinity, as some may think. But the entire book of Revelation is all about Jesus. Jesus is the prophet, Jesus is the priest, and Jesus as the king. He is from him who is and who was and who is to come. He is the eternal presence of God. He was there in the beginning when the Creator formed everything. He is always there. And John wanted to emphasize that God is always there. God discloses to Moses, I am who I am. And in this instance, we hear that he is the one who is with us. He was the one that was there and he is to come. We sometimes get all excited about the Jesus that was. We have stories that we learn as young children in Sunday school about Jesus and, and how he walked around and he told stories to people and he healed people and he did all these wonderful things. And he had a group of disciples that followed him everywhere he went. And he was there in a particular time, in a particular place. And we often are, are anxious to talk.
talk about the Jesus that is to come when He comes again to us, when Christ returns. We can't wait for that day. <coughs> because we know it's going to be wonderful and glorious and Jesus will come. He is to come. We're waiting for His return. But sometimes we forget the middle. The one who is. The one who is here now among us. See, Jesus was and He will come. But each and every day of our lives, He is here. He is walking with us. He is sitting with us. He is riding in our cars with us. He is here to hear and be with us each and every day. We are never alone because the one that was and the one that is to come is here now with us. And it is, it is from the seven spirits before His throne. There's a lot of power in the Holy Spirit. In the book of Isaiah, it gives seven designations of the Spirit. Not seven spirits. Seven, I guess you would say, jobs for the Holy Spirit. It mentions the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and godliness, the spirit of fear of God. And then just to be sure that everyone knew who this letter was coming from, in case they were confused about him who is and who was and who is to come, in case they were confused about this seven spirit thing that was before the throne, it says in the scripture that it was from Jesus Christ. making perfectly clear who the letter is from. So we have no doubt in our mind that this book of Revelation, these letters to the churches were written because Jesus Christ gave instruction to John. You see, Jesus Christ is described by many titles throughout the Bible. And in this particular passage, he again has many titles, but he's also described by his actions. You see, Jesus has a threefold office as the prophet, the one that is the faithful witness, as the priest, the first begotten from the dead, and as the king, the prince of the kings of the earth. Jesus is the faithful witness. The one who witnesses those who are persecuted. The one who is the martyr. The one who witnesses all that we do, all that we say. Jesus is the firstborn from the dead. He's the first fruits of those who have died. Jesus is the one who is the first to be resurrected from the dead and to have that first eternal body. And he enjoys that status of being the oldest child. When I was growing up, my father was a big union man. And I was the oldest, so I had seniority over my brother and sister. As the oldest, I, I, you know, never really got any special privileges, but I got to answer first. And even though my brother, who's about the same height as Dawn, is still my little brother, because I was the oldest child. Jesus is our oldest child. Jesus is God's oldest child that comes and answers for us, who stands in our place, protects us, as an older brother would do. And Jesus is the ruler of the kings of the earth. You see, David is described as the leader and commander for the people, and Christ, as heir of David, inherits that title of king. He is the Lord of lords and the king 
of kings. And the reason he receives this great honor of being what the whole book of Revelation is about is because of what Jesus has done. First of all, he has loved us. He not only loved us, he still loves us. He gave himself for us to demonstrate that love. He freed us from our sins by his blood. He washed away all of our sins. <coughs> and he made us to be a kingdom. Priests serving his God and Father. You see, we are part of the kingdom of God. And we are to be priests serving his God and his Father. Serving our God, our Father. And all that a priest does is share the word of Christ. To share the stories of his healing. To share the stories of this kingdom of God. To share the love that Christ has given us. And we are all called as the church. We are called out to be priests in this kingdom. We are called to be in service to the one and only God, to Yahweh. This is the emphasis of the book of Revelation. The climax, the grand climax to the Bible is this being that we have been made a kingdom. That we have been made priests to serve his God. It's the end of this prayer the Lord God proclaims. He who was, he who is, he who is to come proclaims that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the Almighty. And as the angels sing that hallelujah chorus, he is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Hallelujah. 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 Today as we celebrate this Christ the King Sunday, as we prepare to give thanks to the Lord God Almighty for being the Creator, for being the one that has sent His Son to be all these things for us. We need to Remember that he is seated on that throne in glory. He is seated on that throne looking down at us and smiling as we worship him, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah and Amen.
Christ's name we pray. That's that's precious. precious. I don't see you. I want her to show you. I want her to show you.